The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television, bringing you topics in the way mainstream media won't. BaseNet Internet Television presents As We See It with Fred Boaz and friends. In Los Angeles, I'm Gene White. And now, to our studios in Boston. Thank you, Gene. And hello, everybody, and welcome again to another exciting adventure of As We See It. This is show number 42, being recorded on Tuesday, May 22nd, 2012. I must apologize to everybody for our delay in getting a new show to everyone, but we had some technical problems this week, which we're able to work out over the past couple of days. And also, Fred was out of town, and Holly was here in the Boston area. So it was a little inconvenient to do an As We See It, but the gang is all back together now. So from Boston, Massachusetts, since I am Ed Jupin, out in the Pocono Mountains, we have Fred Boaz, back in St. Louis as Holly Hurley, in Los Angeles, California, Gene White, and in Brookline, Massachusetts, the Lobster. Hey, gang. Hey, Ed, what's up? Hey. Welcome Good back, evening. everybody. Good to have your show going up again. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Fred, Holly, before we get things going with Lobster Tales... What's been happening here? Fred, what happened to you? Where did you disappear uh, they, uh My other job finally did the right thing, and they offered me an early retirement, and I'm out July 31st. So you I took a vacation. everything going, man. So you took a vacation. Well, I took a, vaca- I took a vacation, went to Florida for five days, went fishing, and I'm going to be retired as of July 31st. Woohoo! There you go. Well, retired from the post office. Well, yeah, but you know, <laughs> not for retired from life, but you know. There you go. And, and Holly, what about you? You've been doing some traveling. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I actually had the great pleasure of covering in person the Reach the Beach Relay this year for BaseNet. I put the I placed the videos up on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter along with photos along the road. Uh, it's a 200-mile relay race. We started at Wachusett Mountain and ran down to Horseneck Beach. And it was a relay race that's supposed to be done with 12 people. Our group had 10, so I ended up doing four legs for a total of about 25 miles. And uh, one of the other guys in our group uh, ended up doing a full marathon, and a couple of people were not far behind us. And it was a uh, it was a great experience, but uh, very exhausting, as you can imagine. And that was great weather, too. We were down there at the uh, the beach for the finish line and what fantastic weather not a cloud in the sky oh my gosh it was so beautiful and all the runs were just so scenic and it just it was unbelievable it was so cool such a good time to do it very cool so watch for holly's report on our premiere episode of our flagship show after dark which is being revived in mid to late june and that will be a report on that initial premiere show of after dark next month so I guess with the gang all here and a fresh new episode, we might as well head into Lobster Tales before either Fred or Holly take us into real news. You got it. The first Lobster Tale is There Are No Clocks in Las Vegas Casinos. The second Lobster Tale, Clinophobia is the Fear of Beds. Number three, in Bangladesh, kids as young as 15 can go to jail for cheating on their finals. Number four, it is against the law to slam your car door anywhere in Switzerland. I knew there was a reason I like the Swiss. Yeah, Fred, maybe you could ask your mother I'll, about I'll, that. I'll have to ask my mother about that or ask one of, one of my cousins in Switzerland to find out about that one. Yeah, well, the clocks in uh, in Las Vegas doesn't surprise me. I've been to, yeah, Vegas, I've been to, I've been to Atlantic to, City's the same thing. There's no clocks I, in the Atlantic City casinos They, they do that. They, they don't want you to see what time it is or how long you've been gaming. Remember, those are 24-hour towns. I mean, I've been to casinos at 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been to 5 a.m., 8 a.m. There's still people gambling all the time, and there's no clocks in any of the buildings. Yeah, they don't watch you watching the clock. So, yeah, that's, it's not too much of a lobster tail. That's definitely a very true fact. And there's one more thing that the owners of the casinos do not have. Actually, it's the building itself that doesn't have it. There are no windows, so you can't see if it's day or night. Correct. You know, floor side, yeah, you're absolutely right. right where, the, where the gambling takes place, there's no windows, right? Right. Where did this statistic about the, the 15-year-old, uh, wh- where is this that if, you're, that if you're 15, you cheat on exams, you go to jail? In Bangladesh. In um, Bangladesh. I, that. 
Ooh, holy moly. I mean, I've never I've never had a problem with that, but good lord, that's a terrible thing. I mean, that's that's a serious punishment. I mean, yeah, you should get kicked out of school, but jail? <laughs> jail, really. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incentive not to cheat. That's for sure. Well, you know, every place in the world has different laws. Hey, Larry, this last one, I want to know what the fine is if you do slam your door and get a ticket. I don't know, because... I have no idea. I went and tried to look and find out if there are any fines involved. Well, like Fred said, I Fred has family. Fred has family that's from Switzerland, so maybe he could find out. Well, you should be able to look. I mean, the Swiss have four official languages, so you should, in theory, be able to go to this, uh, a Swiss website and find out about traffic laws. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me, though. I mean, I'd like to see that. I mean... The sign, Gene, the signs when the cop walks up and gives you a ticket, you know. Right, but, um, right. I mean, there might, be a, there might be a sign in Switzerland with a door opening or closing with a the little ouch thing with a line across or something. Who knows, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's possible, yeah. Ignorance of the law there is going to be no excuse either because uh, they'll tell you, you know, you, you can't come to our country, you don't slam your doors. And that's three of them. We had four. What was the one we didn't talk about? Being, uh, having a fear of beds. Uh, clinophobia. It's interesting. What do you do, sleep standing up like a horse? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. My mother-in-law... Stands up to sleep standing up like uh, a horse? No, she's, she's, no, she sits in a chair, and that's how she sleeps every night. Well, Gene, I'm going to tell a little secret about you. Uh-oh. You happen to have always tended to like sleeping in chairs as well. So. That's a family trait. <laughs> That's all, well, not really. I can't help it after I eat, eat a good meal. <laughs> I got all sleep. It's fine. There have been many times I've sat down with Gene and his family to watch a movie or something, and you sit there, and before long, there's Gene in his nice big comfy chair, sawing wood. So Gene falls asleep sitting up. There. And there's nothing wrong with that because we've all done it. <laughs> I can attest to having a very similar problem. I actually had a teacher in high school who called me the narcoleptic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we hear snoring, we're going to know who it came from. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I guess that just about wraps up this week's Lobster Tales. Thank you very much, Larry the Lobster. Okay, you're and welcome. Fred and Holly, uh, what do we have for new news? Okay, well, for those of you that have always wanted to buy a DeLorean, you now can buy a DeLorean. The That's a lobster. The lobster wants one. A DeLorean. You can come back. You can get a DeLorean. Only the only problem is it's not going to go 88 miles an hour and not going to take you into the future. Even with the flux capacitor, it ain't going to happen. Because DeLorean's coming out with a stainless steel bicycle. problem with the sports car went through, you know, with a, only 9,000 were made of the original sports car before DeLorean Motors went out of bankruptcy in 1982. But uh, their new DeLorean CEO, Steve Wynn, just fired up the plant for making bicycles. This bicycle is going to run about $1,700, so it's going to be a little bit more expensive than a lot of us can afford. Well, you know, I, I, I don't appreciate you saying that I can't go back to the future with my DeLorean bicycle. You don't know, maybe going down a steep hill with a flux capacitor. I could hit you can get it up to 88, yeah. sure. We definitely, did, you, did any of you guys, well, I guess you guys weren't young enough, but we were young enough that we actually tried that. Me and my best friend Summer and her brother Trent hooked up a, a cardboard box to the back of some bicycle or something in my backyard. And, and every time Trent would be like, we almost did it. We almost reached 88 miles an hour. So I've already tried to go back to the future on a bicycle. Maybe if I had a DeLorean, I would have made it. And maybe if you're in San Francisco with all the hills. You'll get up yeah, to you'll get up to 88 in San Francisco, sure. <laughs> Go down Lombard Street at 88 miles an hour. Yep, land uh, up on well, your head on know. the first curve. I don't know about Lombard Street. Why don't you know about Lombard Street? <laughs> That's that <laughs> curvy S turn. That's the that crookedest street in the world. Oh, That'll be fun, so, though. Probably not the best choice, though, if you're trying to get it to 88 miles an hour. No, I would imagine yep. not. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I, I guess maybe, I, let's see here. Oh yeah, this one. This one's actually pretty serious. Coming off of this, this is not funny. Uh, something you wouldn't want to see on a bike, anyway. Uh, the New York Senate just passed a bill to make viewing child porn on the internet a crime. Basically, if you seek out looking at anyone under 16 years old in a sexual content, they're saying it's illegal. Um, because this is apparently closing a loophole that was. Isn't, yeah. Okay. I guess it's yes. a loophole. Because I was going to say, isn't it already not legal? Thank you. That was my first question. I mean, I don't understand what this loophole is, but I, I mean, what, is it because 
knowingly or not I mean it, it basically says this the new law says that if you knowingly seek out any obscene performance of sexual content by a child less than 16 years of age it's illegal so knowingly seems like the only loophole to me in the current law so what was the old law that there was a loophole that it was, it was always I was always under the impression that let's say you had even one child porn picture on your computer and your computer was gotten through by law enforcement for some even unrelated reason. They come across that child porn picture. You're now a register. You're going to get convicted. You're a registered sex offender. You're going away to jail and everything for that one child porn picture. That's yeah. how I always understood it. So I don't see a loophole if I, there. If I learned anything the, from Law and Order SVU, that would be uh, it. The ambiguity might be in the word knowing. So I didn't no, know it was kitty porn site. So that's the new I, law. That, that's the thing, is that if you knowingly go on, it's like... It's like no, 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 though, Fred, that's the new law that says knowingly. Right, right, that's what so they did. The ambiguity Google might have been that they didn't have the word knowingly in there, uh, in, the, in the original law. It's like... Yeah, you know, maybe, the, book, maybe the original law was just too vague to some people. Right. Even though it's it doesn't like, seem vague to us, it might have been vague to some well, people. Well, it's, al it's also like in, in postal laws. They say that you have to willfully misdirect the United States mail or, or intentionally deliver it to the wrong person to make it a felony. You know, if you don't intentionally do it, if it's a mistake, mistakes happen. So they need, because people do access porn sites accidentally by putting in... Oh, a, Fred, uh, yeah, you've, you've given the example on this show uh, about the uh, BJ website. That's right. You know, for That's BJ right. Warehouse. So it does happen, and if you, if you go in and you go out, you're not knowingly accessing it. So just saying accessing it or knowingly, there is a big difference. Either way, I'm glad that New York State did this because it shows that, you know, they're taking a stance against child pornography and trying to save the children as much as they can. I'm hoping that this bill sponsored by the proposal that'll get that'll garner enough support to get it to pass. And I, I hope I hope it does, man. I, I hope it's great. I hope it gets through the whole thing. It's signed by the governor and a whole bit. All I can say is the person that does it accidentally. I hope that person is smart enough to clean his cookies up yeah, before somebody sure. goes on his computer to check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of, even with the current laws, there have been a lot of mistaken problems because especially before, you know, we talked to Kate Hutchison about this at United Domains, you know, before they started trying to make pornography sites easier to identify for people. There's a lot, I mean, if you remember the early days, especially of the Internet back in the 90s, you know, there just was no way to stop stuff from getting in. There was no way to know what websites were what. And there was a lot less protection. And who's to say? I mean, some of the people doing pornography even today or some of the people who may have a vendetta against people, you look at what groups like 4chan and Anonymous have been able to do, it's still kind of scary. I mean, if there wasn't the clause of knowingly in there, a lot of guys get brought to charges and, I mean, are eventually let off, but get brought to charges because of some sort of accident. And that, and that, that, that we, had, we had a show about that a couple months uh, last year, didn't we? When yeah, we when, the, when the we had Kate on. That was, that was when we on. talked about the new triple X domains. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah that's a good thing. I that's that. what I was referencing. Yeah. yeah, we'll bring Kate back on again. She'll join us any time, and maybe we should, since this is a topic in the news again, time to bring Kate back on. Yeah, totally. I think it'd be really interesting. The All question right. I have is why aren't they going after the people that are producing the kitty porn and putting it on the websites and going after the website hosters and things like that? Right. That's the, that's the real problem is a lot of these people exist under so, uh, certain First Amendment, the way that certain First Amendment laws are interpreted. And I think, I don't know, I, I think it would be really interesting to see how they're getting by. I just, I don't understand really why they're not being more aggressive about going after the offenders and less about going after the, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want the users out there, but I, I, I don't think it should exist. Also, tr truth told, I don't know, we, we talk about very difficult things on this show all the time. I don't like that the pornography exists. I don't think it should exist. I think that people should go after those people. I think you're right about that. But if these guys are not following through in a real world way, you just you wonder. I don't know. It's it, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah, my personal opinion is I I guess because of say First Amendment rights or whatever that porn has the right to exist, but somehow I guess 
what I would like to see, and it's, it's again, it's, it's great. We are going to have to bring Kate back on. I don't think that there's any way you could mandate porn having to go to triple X sites. You can't tell porn.com that they have to become porn.triple X. But if there was a way to mandate that, well, you could look at porn till the cows come home if you go to a .xxx site. But if you don't go to a .xxx site, you know you're going to be safe from stumbling upon porn. But That's right. I guess there's obviously, and we'll bring Kate on because she could give us the answer. But I guess there's no way to mandate that. So, Well, not yet anyway. Mm-hmm. Got an amendment to the DeLorean story that Fred was sure. bringing up earlier. Amend away. Okay, Fred says something about seventeen hundred dollars for the it, bike. Don't tell me it's even told, more yeah. than that. It's actually uh, five thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars uh, for the bike. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess they raised the price since I re researched it. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's expensive. How many are you buying? <laughs> I'm buying them all. How many are you financing? Okay, <laughs> I'll buy you the uh, the little nozzle thing that you blow the air into the tires with. Uh, hey, if it says the lawyer, I'll take it. Yeah, that's probably five hundred dollars just for that. <laughs> How much for a fake f flux capacitor to put on your dashboard or on your handlebars? All right, let's go back to the future with our next story. What's next? <laughs> we have a Tennessee man who fathered thirty children. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thirty children, and is asking the courts for break on child support. The guy's name is Desmond Hatchett. He's 33 years old, lives in Knoxville. He has children with 11 women at the same time, basically, over, over a series of years. And i am tell you something. I pay child support, and it's not easy. But some of these women are getting like $1.98 a week. And this guy wants a break. How about we have a, have a break? We have a break. He doesn't have any more children. I'd just like to say for the record, did anyone else hear this story and think there are 30 women out there who need to be tested for all kinds of stuff? <laughs> That's, that was my first thought. It's 11 women. Yeah. He slapped. God bless those children. God bless them. Well, you know, he also makes minimum wage. That's the big issue. So basically right now the, t the state is taking half of everything he owns, and these women are getting, like, nothing from it because this guy has no money. Because she can't get blood out of his phone. Exactly. And apparently when he, had t when he was at 21 kids, they said, dude, listen, you can't afford this. This is ridiculous. Stop having kids. And then he went and had nine more. So, yeah, maybe they should give him a break. But truthfully, it's not like he's being that much help anyway. He just needs to stop having kids, and I don't think he should get a break because he had 30 children. I mean, that's just ridiculously irresponsible. See, the problem is that the state and the uh, taxpayers wind up picking up tab for it because they still get, they, they are still, most of them are still getting support from the state. Which is, well, which then what do you, what do, you do? Lock the guy up and now Absolutely. the tax, but now the tax, now the taxpayers are paying for this they guy. Lock me up. But now that uh, I agree, so now you lock this guy up, and now we, the taxpayers, are paying the fifty thousand dollars a year or whatever it's known that it costs to keep somebody in jail. He's still not contributing to society or his kids then. So yeah, well, like, now it's costing us fifty grand a year to keep him in jail. How about we how about we pay seven hundred fifty dollars and get the guy and get the guy a vasectomy? Maybe that's <laughs> the answer, as opposed to him being in jail, where it's going to cost taxpayers money to keep him there. Yeah, but I mean, even with this, do you really want that to happen? I mean, that's such a infringement upon his rights, regardless of how I feel about it. I right, mean, and that's why I'm saying I guess I don't know what I feel the answer is. I don't. I guess I don't feel that jail is the right answer because obviously it, it's a known fact that I don't know that my number's right on, but it's pretty darn close. It's like fifty thousand dollars a year to keep somebody in jail. So it's going to cost us, the taxpayers, fifty grand a year, give or take, to keep this guy in jail. What does that prove? So uh, I don't know. What is the answer? The thing is this, though: there are some of the mothers who have not received child support, which already is a violation of the law. You know, like I said, if I hadn't paid child support, they would have put me in jail. On the articles back in, in 2009, Hatchett was in court to answer charges that many of the mothers were not receiving child support. Right there is a violation of the law. You have 21 kids. You're not paying child support for them. That's a violation of the law. Put them in jail for that, if nothing else. I mean, this guy's got to learn that fathering kids or having sex without protection is not the answer. 
because you can't force someone to wear a condom. You can't force the women to go on birth control. You can't force this stuff. As a result, the guy's got 30 kids. But taking them out back and slapping them around might make more sense than putting them in jail. I just think that putting the guy in jail accomplishes absolutely nothing other than cost us money. Exactly. I agree. Maybe he wants to get a reality show on the Learning Channel. Oh, I'm sure he's yeah. going to get one. Uh, that's he's probably he's in the works. <laughs> well, he's going to get he... something, that's for sure. Well, if he does, I'm not going to watch it. Well, the guy's getting his 15 or 20 minutes of fame, so. Yeah, and we just gave him another five minutes. Oh, but come on. I mean, that's a feat in and of itself. He talked 11 women into having 30 babies for him. The guy earned it. <laughs> so what's the latest? Where Where does this stand right now? As far as I know, he's still got the kids, so. And he's not in jail right now. And not in jail. As far as I know, nothing's changed. The article, has, I, I tried to get an update on it, and it, there, not, nothing's been updated since the article came out. And, you know, everybody talks about his right to procreate, which is fine. But, you know, there gets a point where you got to say, hey, enough's enough. And obviously, since he went to court and said he wasn't going to have any more kids and had nine more, mm -hmm. you know, obviously he's not living up to his end of yeah, what Yeah, right, right. Bargain. And that's why I'm saying something, ha at that point, you know, you, you not only did you have the, the nine more kids, you lied to the court. So now we're going to take action against you. And, and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like denying people their rights. I don't like forcing people to have vasectomies or steroids. I don't, I don't like that. But the idea of this guy, I mean, how many more kids is it going to be before somebody steps in there and says enough is enough? Yeah, I mean, we may not have heard the end of the story. He, he might have ten more kids yet. Who the heck knows? Oh, Jesus. Wow. Well. That'll be some hell of a family reunion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to rent out Madison Square Garden. That blows my mind. Well, speaking of things that are disgusting, apparently the Canadian authorities are waiting for a thief to <clears throat> pass a swallowed diamond. <laughs> and the pass she means ain't the pass people think. Yeah. I think people know where that is going, if you will. And by going, I mean through... The guy by the name of Richard McKenzie Matthews uh, Digestive System. He has a $20,000 diamond in there. So they found it on an x-ray. Uh, they found a pair of fake diamonds, but he said that because the actual diamonds are translucent, that uh, the real one didn't show up in the, in the scan, so they're waiting for it on the other end. <laughs> and I hate to be the guy that's got to do the waiting. <laughs> what goes up must come down. Well, and they're, they're feeding him some interesting things in order to get stuff to move. So, all right, Canada. x, -X lax sandwiches. <laughs> right? You know what? Yeah, I want to check wait. on this, actually, because this was from the 17th. I'd be really curious to see if anything interesting has happened since then. You would think. I, uh, it's been almost a week. In one way and out the other. Well, wouldn't it be hilarious if, oh, he did. He passed it, so it was in there for sure. All right. It, it took him nine days. <laughs> Took up nine days. <laughs> that must have been a big diamond. One point seven carats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was what they call a Martian an pink. An bag. expensive poop. All I can say is ouch. Wow. No joke. <laughs> well, and he agreed to to take laxatives and stuff to like help the process. Oh my god! And the reason he had the two fake ones in there is because he was trying to to switch them out so that people would think that he didn't have it. I I don't even I don't even understand how this works. Oh god, what an idiot! This guy should be on world's dumbest everything. Oh, someone please take us back to real news. I'm not gonna stop laughing for a long time. They they launched the world's first commercial rocket the other day coming out of, out of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, not Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is a, an important thing because no rocket has ever been launched before except under the government auspices uh, by NASA. And the rocket right now is on its way to the International Space Station to deliver simply supplies. And they say that it can dock up with the International, so that the capsule can interlock with the space station and what they and as soon as they, they can get permission from nasa to do it they want to transfer supplies now nasa no longer is in the in the business of building its own rockets so we're paying the russians 63 million dollars a shot for our astronauts to go to the uh space station from russia the soyuz missions so you know that's something else to go to but it, this is the uh di it, this is different it it's a capsule that's different from other cargo capsules it's the only one designed to return to Earth that can be reused, kind of like the space shuttle in the idea. And it's called the Dragon, and after it's unloaded, it'll be pulled up for a return trip landing in the Pacific Ocean. Pretty cool. I mean, this, this is something great. You no, know, that's, that's fine. Contracted out. So now they're, you know, just contracting out to private industry to uh, take supplies up to the space station. 
They're talking well, about trying to get people out uh, as early as 2015. Well, and apparently it's uh, it's it's close to the space station, so now they're just trying to dock it, and they've got to figure out if it's going to be easy to reliably dock. Apparently, they're going to send one of the astronauts out to grasp it and pull it in with a with a robotic arm. He has to basically go out with this little cargo thing and pull it in so this is this is essentially the big part they said you know they've got it up there close now but over the next three days they just basically have to orchestrate getting it docked so this will be interesting to see because if it works i mean this is revolutionary yeah there's the company to buy stock in never mind facebook oh uh, I, speaking of facebook what does everybody think of last friday's ipo I think it just proves that, first of all, uh, you know, well, let, let's talk about it. So they opened at 38, which, oh, was, which was 15% off of uh, what analysts expected. Yeah, they um, said that that was way too high of expectations as an opening price to begin with. Precisely. It just, I think, what it proves. Now, I know you guys have different opinions on this. You guys have been calling it a loser stock. You've been saying it's going to be a penny stock. It's going to tank. Tanking already. It's down to, th as we're recording the show on Tuesday. Day, four it's days after, 31. and it's down to 31. It's already lost six bucks, which this translates thing? to over $20 million in losses. Right. The same thing happened to Google when it came out, and Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and a couple other companies basically orchestrated this entire thing. They ran it up, and then right before it came out, they basically told some of their insider investor clients, some of their high-dollar clients, that it was going to crash. So now, once again, it just proves analysts do not understand how to value tech companies. They never have. I mean, we've had bubbles before. This is an issue. And now everybody, on Friday, all Harvard Press was putting out was, hey, everybody wants to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, why he's the best leader in the universe. And now they're putting out blogs that are saying, oh, why Facebook was never going to be very successful and all this other stuff. It just proves our market doesn't know how to value it. I mean, the same thing happened with Google when it first came out. And it also proves that our banking system is still unbelievably corrupt. And there needs to be a ton of regulation. I think I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to call it a penny stock, but I think if this would have had an IPO of about 18 bucks, I'll bet you now four days later, instead of losing six dollars, I'll bet you from 18 it would have been up to about 25. I think it would have been in the opposite direction. Oh yeah, I, I said the same thing when it came out. It's, he's pricing it way, way too high. I mean, I was looking, I was looking for anywhere between 15 and 20 just for starting, and I heard. And it would have been up to 25 by and, now, but it opened and, so high that's why it's tanking. And, well, that, and that's part, that, that's right. the point of the 38. Well, and you guys are absolutely right, and that's why regulators in Massachusetts actually subpoenaed Morgan Stanley because a lot yeah, there's of there's a big investigation are, underway. Oh now. yeah, there's a ton of stuff yeah. going on. There. So I mean, to blame to blame Facebook for this, and people are like, "Oh, Zuckerberg lost two billion dollars." Yeah, but when you have twenty billion dollars, I mean, it's a lot. But the guy's gonna be okay. I just I think this I think it's really interesting. Everybody's trying to lay this on Facebook when it's just another example of. We have unbelievable corruption in our analyst system, and especially... Well, and, and again, I'm not a Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook fan, but Mark Zuckerberg didn't set that $28 price. He exactly. had nothing to do with that. Exactly, and it's it's a really, it's an interesting... It, I mean, if you if you read everything on it, it just it's just further proof. I mean, you know, they're having, you know, even Apple, uh, Apple is trading at about thirteen point six times its earnings, uh, and they set Facebook at like hundreds of times point, uh, for its earnings. And they did something similar to Google, and Google right now is trading at six hundred dollars, which even though it's down sixty bucks from where it from where it came into yeah, the it's market, ridiculous. I mean, price. I mean, Coke and Pepsi oscillate by like thirty percent on any given day. Like over the last over the last year, they've oscillated by about thirty percent. So a ten percent of Google or ten percent for Facebook. I mean, it just proves the analysts a don't know how to don't know how to look at it, and b are angry. B, I mean, the reason he's they're giving such bad press to Facebook is because they don't want the focus on the fact that they suck at this. They don't know it, what they're doing. Didn't Amazon.com also have a similar problem when they went? When yes, they did. They did. Yeah. Absolutely, Amazon's yeah. the other big one that that had a very similar issue. Yes. Right. Right. And of course, at the time, one of the big problems is, and this is something a lot of the the, the a lot of the smarter uh, fast companies and a lot of the smarter you know tech people who are in who understand what's happening in business today as opposed to forty years ago, are saying is you know like when Amazon first came out, they were basically an online Barnes and Noble. They just did books. 
think about that compared to what they're doing now. Like, you know, Google and Google is making money hand over fist. Facebook is making money hand over fist. Now, whether other companies are making money hands over fist through them, you know, Amazon's trading today at $215. I think, I think it's just, as you said, Gene, I think it, it just, it's an overall industry issue. They just don't know right. how to value the tech industry. I'll give the money that, so, I'll give the money that I don't have any day to Amazon before I give a penny to Facebook. So that's for darn sure. Which is okay. I mean, everybody has preferences. You know, it's just like you can have preferences with social networks, just like people have preferences with hardware. Exactly. You know, I mean, the there's problem, no reason. See, part of the problem is this would have been affordable. And I, I might have bought some shares of stock in at 18, but at 38, and it was coming down. So why am I going to pay? Why am I going to buy an initial offering at 38 when I get when I get it at 18? And I know it's going down. I know it's not going to be able to support it. But at 18 to 20. You, most of the people out there can buy it, and at that point, the stock starts going up, and you're going to make more money at that way. The Goldman Sachs, you know, they need to be investigated. They need, they're, they're, again, they set the price, not Zuckerberg. And, you know, it's like any other IPO. They're trying to make as much as they can initially to first run out. Because you know, as I do, their way, that their corporate executives are waiting until things settle down before they're buying anything anyway. Right. Well, that's, that's a big deal. Apparently, Goldman Sachs bought a bunch of the stock and then dumped it right at the beginning of the IPO, which is something that they do. You know, a lot of people say if Goldman Sachs buys something before it opens, they will wait to buy it because they know Goldman Sachs does that. Like, sometimes they'll try to manipulate the market, which I think, again, is just another example of the corruption of the banking system and I think this is just further I think there are two big aspects of that one is the analysts have no idea how to how to analyze tech markets they have no idea what they're doing and I think on the other side of it is just that we have a lot of corruption really high up I mean just today you know they're they're looking into uh, the former Goldman Sachs director and a lot of other things I mean th this the story of how we got into this recession is not over and unfortunately Facebook's IPO I think is going to be a part of that well, you know, a lot of a lot of people also point to that. You know, we don't know what Facebook's planning to do next. If oh, there's always talk about a Facebook phone to become another Google. Well, and, you know, some people say that they uh, they actually IPO too late. Mm -hmm. that yeah, was I a thought it would have been a while ago. I, there was plenty of talk last year that it was going to happen. Yeah, I think I think it'll be interesting to see what's you know what's what's going to. We'll happen. have to watch it. Don't buy yet. I don't think it's tanked yet. Wait, a, wait another. <laughs> Then maybe consider buying. If it gets out, if it gets out of twenty, definitely buy. But if you know, as far as I'm concerned, eighteen twenty would be perfect. But you never know. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens because it really takes time to balance out. And I think a lot of people, when they buy an initial offering, I would say maybe the exception would be Microsoft. But you just you, you don't know yet. So it's too soon to tell. But I did want to point to that a lot of people, I think, are sort of blaming this all on Facebook. And I think there is uh, significant blame to go around within the banking industry. So, yeah. Oh, that was a, that was a good discussion, guys. Well, is that is that all our real news for this week? That's oh, the real news. Oh, already? Yeah, I know. We're down to, uh, we're down to obits in wow. this week that Disco died. Thank God. You know, no no oh, offense fuck. no offense to the people we no thing. Hey, no offense to the people that we lost. God, Disco died. And we, I know somebody who's living in New Jersey <laughs> who's not happy about it. What's the matter, Gene? You're not happy about it? You have an oldie station. You don't have a disco station. I have discos on my uh, disco on my station. Okay. Play disco. Donna Summer and Hughes Corporation, all those great people. BGs, of course. So Gene, yeah, while well, so Gene, while you're while you're, talking, while you're talking while you're talking about uh, disco, bring us into our open for this week. Who did we lose? Well, we lost Donna Summer, the queen of disco, and we also lost Robin Gibb. We uh, had him back for a little while, but now he has passed away officially, which leaves one person. That's uh, Barry Gibb. He was the older one. That's the funny thing about that. Andy Gibb passed away first. He was the youngest. Then Maurice. Now Robin, and then Barry's left. Amazing. The brother, the brother Gibb? No. Nah. BG? No, it's, probably be just, it's yeah. just B now for Barry. Yeah. And, yeah, and Donna Summer also, huh? Yeah. Ironic, yeah, two disco uh, superstars. And they died. Their ages were a year apart. Donna was 63 and, Barry, and Robin was 62. Both of them died of cancer. So that's yeah. interesting, too. Even though Donna Summer kind of uh, disputed the fact that she had cancer, uh, she finally succumbed to it and uh, passed away from it. But... She was great. I mean, she was uh, one of the pioneers of the disco era with all the great songs she had. And what I liked about Donna Summer is a lot of her songs, they started out nice and uh, serene, 
and then kicked up into the disco. And I thought that was a really unique way to do songs. Like yours are my favorite uh, by Maynard Ferguson, MacArthur Park. You know, Donna Summer's version was, was great. It was, it was right on top there. Absolutely. And let us know where we can hear all these great songs, Gene. Well, you can hear them right here on GMM Radio at gmmradio.com. Well, and while, while we're at it, we have a very short time now until the Scooper Bowl, right? Yes, we do. Two weeks, June 5th, uh, we'll be covering it. So there are only two weeks for our listeners to go to our website and donate, not only to us, but 20% of everything we get goes to the Scooper Bowl, goes to the Jimmy Fund, goes to Dana-Farber to cure cancer. So, you know, especially in light of what's happening. There you go. If you're a disco fan, you want to give to uh, Dana-Farber. Yes, so please, regardless of, uh, of what you may have heard on the show, some of the gentlemen feel about disco, remember Gene's words and remember that cancer kills all kinds of great people and great artists, not just the ones who do disco. So, you know, go to BaseNet and give and support the wonderful cancer research that's going on up there in Baston. And make sure you come out and check out, if you're in the Boston area, come out and check yes, out. Yes, come out on uh, Tuesday, June 5th, City Hall Plaza, Boston, Massachusetts, Jill Henley. Uh, Holly's co-host from the Crashing Glass podcast, and she's also the host of our About Boston series. She will be there covering it for About Boston, and uh, come out, meet her, and I'll be there. Larry the Lobster will be there. Fred is hoping to be there. Uh, A whole bunch of us from BaseNet will be there. You could meet us in person if you like, and it's a great time. And I should say, it's a, I believe it's $8 for adults. If you pre-register, you could go to jimmyfund.com. If you pre-register to buy your ticket, I believe it's only $7. You'll even get a dollar off. But it's all-you-can-eat ice cream. It goes from noon until 8 p.m. for three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the 5th, 6th, and 7th of June. And all three days from noon to eight. And uh, you you don't pay for the three days. You just pay for the one day. But uh, if you get there at noon and pay your eight bucks, you could eat all the ice cream you could eat until 8 p.m. It's it's incredible. And we have a, uh, on our BaseNet website, we do have a report from, I think it's last year. Yep, the past and, two years. Uh, there's two years it's worth. Some of these interesting flavors that they're making out there. I can't wait. If I can get up there, I'm going because I want. I, want, I, I just got to taste this stuff. I love ice cream and. Holly was it, there two years. A, Holly you know, covered it two years ago, and Jill covered it last year. So go on there, check that out. You might find might find it, and come out and see us if we're out there. And we'd like to see the fans and talk to you and see what's going on, and find out how you've been doing and the whole bit. Too bad Gene can't come out from L.A., but we'd like to see him out there to get the whole crew out there. But pay for my plane fare, and I'll be on there in a minute. Yeah. By the way, speaking of entertainment, so tired. I can't do that. Speaking of entertainment, and we'll um, file it under who cares. Who cares? Yeah, oh, Fred's yeah. back. I don't have to do it this week. Fred, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I covered for you last week, Fred. What are we who caring about? Dancing with the stars. Who cares? <laughs> Final three this week. Big, big week. Big week. Did you see last night, Holly? Oh, I had to miss it because I was on the plane. She was back, in Boston. I flight got in late. Yeah, from Boston. So you got to give what, me up to Lem was very giving last night. He gave tens to a lot of different people last oh, night. Oh, finally, huh? Yeah, finally, the ten paddle was used by Lem. And, wow, that must um, be so dusty. The top one on the list with 30 points from the two dances is Catherine Jenkins. Wow. And then, and then, of course, Donald Driver, I think his first name is, mm-hmm. along with, what was the other one? William Levy. William Levy, that's right. Yeah, and they're both at 29, so we'll see what happens tonight. It's going to be a big night to, tonight. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, so Catherine was injured last week, no? Yeah, she was, but she came back powerful and did a great job on all the dances that she did last night. Wow. Well, you guys are really not going to be able to stand it next week because Gene and I are going to have to talk about the winner. Yes. Well, but there's, there's, there's good about that because then that means it's done. <laughs> For this year. Don't worry, over the summer I'll find something else to bug you with. And before we wrap up today, I guess we have another in our new continuing episode here of The Lobster Stumps the Announcer. Do we have one today, Larry? Yes, we do. Go ahead, Uh-oh. try to stump the announcer. Uh oh, I'm not ready for this one. You're not okay, supposed but... to be. <laughs> oh, he can't do that. Oh, no, that's, that's yeah. copyrighted. Just ask the question already, will you? Oh, okay. Settle down, Fred. <laughs> Jeez, Jeez okay. we gave him one week off, and he comes back all riled up. I know. No more I know. weeks off for Fred. I just want to see him stump the announcer. 
<laughs> okay. The... He probably will. How's that? Okay. Well, go ahead, Larry. Well, well, here's the question. How did Meatloaf choose his stage name? How did Meatloaf choose his stage name? I mean, that's not his real name. Well, we figured that out. Mom me? O'Day did not say, I want to kill this kid Meatloaf. Nope, that's not it. So how did he choose his stage name? You know, I used to know this, but I forgot. Ah, uh, the lobster stumped the announcer. Go ahead, Larry. What, are we one for one now? Yep, it's tied. The series is tied, one each. The answer to, the, the answer to how he chose his stage name is that, okay, when his parents brought him home from the hospital, his father called him Meatloaf. I okay. guess he was a chubby little kid. Huh, must have been. I'll tell you my favorite. I don't know if you've ever seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. Of course. I think everybody yes. in the world has seen it. I've seen my it. Favorite, uh, my favorite line is when they go, Meatloaf again. Mm -hmm. He played Eddie the uh, delivery boy. Right. Red is for girls. And that one. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, you seem like the type that was a Rocky Horror person. I, I have enjoyed Rocky Horror once but I am not a midnight screening Rocky okay. Horror kind of person. It's a lot of fun. For our listeners that have never experienced it, whether you're 18 or 88, experience it. When you could see it, the movie is shown in a movie theater, and then there's a live cast, usually college-age kids, that acted out in the auditorium of the theater. It's a lot of fun. It, it's amazing. One time when I was managing a movie theater, as a matter of fact, I had one of my older customers who had to be well into their 70s. They came in one time and they said, oh, we keep hearing about this Rocky Horror thing that you do on Saturday nights. You think we should go see it? I said, absolutely. I didn't try to stop them at all because I really do feel whether you're 18 to 88, go and see it at least once. Well, they went and saw it and they came out at the end of it and the husband said to me, well, you know, he's laughing his ass off. And he said, I don't know if I'd do it again. He said, but you know what? You were right. I had to do this once. He says it was quite an experience. <laughs> See, you know, my and I do that for uh, Serenity, the Joss Whedon film. We, we, get, we get really into that. We did it at the, uh, actually near you, Larry, in Brookline at the uh, theater there. It's amazing. I, you know, I, I enjoy midnight screenings. I'm not averse to it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Mm hmm but that's a glowing recommendation, and I'll definitely try it. It's a lot of fun. You were going to say, Jay? Cool. You know what's cool? Uh, la two years ago for Halloween Horror Nights at the um, place I work at, they actually had one of our attractions set up for Rocky Horror Picture Show with live people that looked a lot like the actors right. from the film. And it was so great to see the audience participation of the people c coming in to see that show. It just brought back a lot of great memories. It is. It's, it's a lot of fun. Highly recommended. So I guess that just about does it for this week. I want to thank the whole gang for being back, and hopefully we're back on normal schedule for at least the next few weeks. I guess we're getting into the summer now, so there may be a vacation or a trip coming up here and there. But by the miracles of Skype, hopefully, even with people away, we could continue to bring you a show over the next several weeks and get back onto a normal track. So again, as Holly said, the Scooper Bowl in Boston is coming up to benefit the Jimmy Fund and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Visit basenettv.com, click on the donation tab. You could donate as little as $1 and 20% of all donations will go to the Jimmy Fund. And social media, you could interact with us on Google+, Twitter, and Facebook as BaseNet TV. You could email your comments or suggestions to as we see it at awsi at basenettv.com. And in Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Ed Jupin. And from the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, I'm Fred Boas. In St. Louis, Missouri, I'm Holly Hurley. Wake up the lobster. <laughs> and I'm and from Brooklyn, Massachusetts, I'm the lobster. And from Los Angeles, California, I'm Gene White. On behalf of everybody, we thank you for listening today. And we look forward to having you next week for another As We See It right here on Base Net Television.